Hello and welcome everyone to a fun live class. We're going to be going over some fun fact trivia for the summer mini, mini unit studies over at Peanut Butter Fish Lessons. Um, if you didn't do any or many of the summer unit studies, don't worry. You will be able to come and test your knowledge of sunflowers, fireflies, fireworks, thunderstorms, and more. This is an opportunity for you to learn some fun facts and test your knowledge against your siblings or your parents. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I hope that you guys go ahead and download the free uh, fall mini unit study. Uh, the first one is going to be all about harvest, so I do have a link to that. I'm going to go ahead and post that in the comments here. We are saying goodbye to summer and hello to fall. So go ahead and download that freebie that Randy's made available. Thank you again for joining us. It is so good to have you. Thank you for inviting me. And our trivia questions are multiple choice. So you really can attend even if you did not do any of the summer mini unit studies because you got a one in four chance on every one. So if you do want us to be able to see your comments over on the live stream, be sure to give StreamYard, that's the software that we're using to make this possible, permission so that we can see your comments. I went ahead and posted a link. It's just StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook. And that'll just make it so that we can see your comments. And if you guys haven't already checked out the summer unit studies, uh, there still is time to do some of those unit studies. If you have one that you are interested in, I went ahead and put a link so that you can be able to see the different summer unit studies that we're going to be going over. And one of them is all about thunderstorms. And we were just talking how both of our areas have been very active this week for thunderstorms. So see, it would still apply. Yes, I just was actually just before we got live, I actually heard some thunder in the background. So, uh, yep, it's going to be very relevant today, a very relevant topic. <laughs> Go ahead and let us know who is joining us live and where you're joining us from. Um, in the last live stream, we actually had someone from uh, America, Australia and New Zealand that was joining us live. That was super cool. I'd love to hear what state you guys are joining us from. I'm actually in uh, Idaho today. Um, Randy, where are you joining us from? I am in North Carolina, not too far from the South Carolina border. So completely other side of the United States. Absolutely. We are three hours apart, I think, in our time zone. So. <laughs> Looks like Susie is joining us, as well as Lindsay and Robin uh, is in New Jersey, U.S. Hi, guys. Be sure to allow StreamYard to see your comments so that we can be able to see them over on the live stream software. It looks like we have Yulian and Zion here from Augustus, Augusta, Georgia, I believe. And Tiffany, we got Jody and Caden from Kentucky. Okay. And Susie is actually joining us from Oil City, uh, Pennsylvania. So we got people from, and then we got the Vargas family from California. So someone over from the West Coast. Hi. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the slides up here. And we've got Jessica from Tennessee. Hi there. And I went ahead and to a link, Randy, if you want to take a look, just in case, uh, so that you can be able to see the comments as well. Well, if you guys are all ready, uh, I think that we can get started on the trivia. Mm -hmm. we uh, sure have you guys? Can. Have you guys already went and downloaded the Harvest Fall Mini Unit Study that Randy made free? If not, I would highly recommend that you go do that as well while we are diving into these summer topics. Yes, because oh, we're like we going to... Jessica from South Carolina. 
And I'll say we're going to do part of the harvest unit study at the end of the trivia session. So if you want to grab it and print out, there's a picture of a farm. You want to print out one of those for each of your kids and grab some colored pencils while we are going through the trivia, then you'll be all set for that part of the class. All right, are we ready to start our trivia? Yes, we have a couple of people who said, we have three people who said, yes, they are ready. And, All right, uh, so we did 12 mini unit studies this summer. And so I picked a multiple choice question that was in the quiz at the back of each one. So like I said, you got one in four chance. Even if you didn't do the unit studies, don't worry. And you're gonna learn 12 new things while we're here. So let's start with the one we had way back in June about thunderstorms. What kind of clouds do you see in the sky before thunderstorms begins? You have four choices here. Are they wispy thin clouds? Very wide clouds that cover the whole sky? Very tall clouds? Or very low clouds that form fog? So go ahead, you can put the letter in the chat or you could put the whole phrase in the chat, whatever works for you. So Tiffany is guessing B, and that is also my guess as well. And as I said before on these trivia classes, I don't get a peek at the answers beforehand. I'm guessing along with you guys as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, it looks we like have... by, uh... yeah, it looks like most people are guessing B. All right. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but it is C. It is the tall clouds. So when you see those clouds, starting to get tall in the sky, that means you could have a thunderstorm forming. And if you grab the mini unit study, it'll explain the whole reason behind that. All right, let's move on to dandelions. So we had a whole unit study about dandelions. Dandelions mostly spread their seeds by A, sticking to animals, B, floating in creeks and rivers, C, floating on the wind, or D, being eaten by birds and then pooped out. And that might sound like a weird choice, but seeds are really spread that way of some plants. So it's a real choice. Uh, I think that the answer is C. Right. And if we you have, guys we have do others. want more time, if you do want more time to uh, answer a question, all you have to do is hit the pause on the video and then you guys can discuss before answering the question. A good idea. So it looks like Brenda says D, Susie says C, Faya says D. Everybody thinks different answers. So this is, mm -hmm. this is we're, we're, we're all over the place, guys. Uh, and these are Susie all different C. ways seeds spread. So... But in this case, we're looking for dandelion seeds, which float on the wind. So if you picture you pull a dandelion that has gone to seed like this and you blow it, you are helping spread dandelions around the around your area. So ones that would be one, two, ones that would it looks be like D four people got that one pressed. <laughs> all right. Cool. D would be ones that are like fruits that animals or birds might eat and then poop out. That's more where you're going to see that when it is a fruit. All right, moving on to the sun. All right, we have five choices on this one. So which do we not get from the sun? And there's there's a little trick turned you know in here. So listen carefully, think carefully. A light. B, water, C, heat, D, energy, E, food. So we get four of these from the sun. Which one do we not get from the sun? What do you guys think? You may think there's two we don't get from the sun. So we've got to think carefully. So Tiffany says B and E. Mary and Jennifer and Erica all say B. So does Brenda and Leslie. And Lindsay says B. Susie as well. So they, they're looking like most people are thinking it is water. This is Which true. Is we do not guess. get water. So if you thought E, food, 
We do use sunlight for photosynthesis, which makes plants make food, and then we eat plants. So technically, we do get food tricky, tricky. from the sun. Yes. Without the sun, we would not have food. Let's put it that way. All right, we are moving on onto fireflies. And this was our most popular unit study as far as downloads for the summer. This one people are really interested in. So how, how do, that should say how do, fireflies give off light? Is it A, a chemical reaction in their abdomen creates light? B, their body is like a mirror and reflects light? C, their head makes light through electric pulses. Or D, they eat bacteria that light up. So what do you guys think? Let's take a look here. We got uh, D. So one person thinks that they eat bacteria that light up. And while you're answering, just a reminder that when animals give off light, it is called bioluminescence. Go ahead, Amelia. So it looks like uh, most people are saying A. Some people are saying D. So it looks like Jessica Ann is saying D. Uh, Lindsay said B. So it's like people are divided on this one. I am going to guess. I don't actually know the answer, but I'm going to guess that it is A. That one seems like that one seems like the one I think it is. You may see my dog in the background, by the way. Don't mind him. <laughs> and you are correct, Amelia, along with many other people. It is a chemical reaction in their abdomen that creates the light. There are some animals that have bioluminescence through bacteria. So you are probably thinking of some other kind of animal. And don't ask, ask me which one so are right now because I don't remember. But you definitely were on to something. All right. Fireworks, the different colors of fireworks are made by the different size of the rockets, different food dyes, different chemical elements, or different paints. How do the fireworks show different colors? I believe that the answer I it's 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 a tie between C and D to me, but I think that it's C. I, okay. I think I need to do your unit studies, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's fun because our last question, this one both, you know, relate to well, I almost gave the answer. I'm gonna hold my thought there for a second. <laughs> No spoilers, Randy. It looks like everyone also believes that it is C. So it's pretty okay. unanimous. So I hope that we're what right. What I was saying <laughs> is both relate to chemistry. So it's just fun when you do these unit studies, you see the relationship between all the things you've been learning in school that you might think, what, what does this have to do with anything? That's what unit studies Where are great for, showing those relationships. Where am I getting right. this information? Yeah, exactly. Right. So different chemical okay. elements. And blue, as we have here, is copper. I don't remember all of them off the top of my head. I, in fact, I even wrote that one down to remind myself. But blue is from copper. All right, we're moving on to ships. So we did a whole unit study on ships. And the main reason I wanted to do that is because it's fun to play around with the idea of floating in the summer, whether it's your own body in the pool or whether you get out like a kiddie pool and have your kids make boats and see if they can get one to float. So what is needed for a boat to float? Is it A, the water that's pushed out of the way by the boat must weigh less than the boat? B, the boat must have tubes that allow water to flow through the boat? C, the water that is pushed out of the way by the boat must weigh more than the boat or nothing. Any boat can float no matter what. Sorry, my little thing to switch slides covers that last line. So what do you I think, think it is? I think it's a tricky one, you guys. So let's, let's, let's think about this one. And Lindsay, I see your question about the crystals. 
I don't know, but there was a link in the unit study about that something you can buy on Amazon that had to do with the chemical elements. So I'm gonna look that up when we're done with the video and I'm gonna get back to you. Okay, so it looks like we have several, yeah, it's, everyone is split around, split on the answers. Some, looks like C, uh, a couple of B, a couple of, more A than anything else. So it looks like, so far, majority say A. They believe A right. is the answer. The water is pushed out of the way, most way left. It is the oh. opposite. The water oh, pushed out of the way by the boat must weigh more than the boat. So Jennifer and Tiffany, you guys got this one right. And did I miss someone? No, you, that, you guys did good. All right. Whoops, whoops. Don't look. Did you all see <laughs> that? I showed you the answer. <laughs> all right, hopefully you didn't see. So each day, young sunflowers do what? A, close up at night and open during the day. B, droop each night and then lift their flowers during the day. C, follow the sun across the sky. Or D, lose their petals and grow new ones. Lindsay, I like your <laughs> eyeballs you put in the comments. <laughs> if you saw the answer, don't, don't, if you don't answer, don't spoil it for other people. You have to guess. So, uh, sunflowers happen to be a special interest of mine, so I am also going to refrain from answering because I do know the answer. Okay. And while so people like are answering here. Most people say C, and we have one person who thinks that it is B. All right. I'll show you the answer. Then I'm going to tell you what I thought was most interesting about this unit study. C is correct. They do follow the sun across the sky. And I think in the unit study, there's even a video explaining why they do that. But what I found most interesting is they have been used to clean up um, radiation in the soil at Chernobyl and Fukushima. Really? Because they're so big, they absorb so much out of the soil. The issue then is now you have this sunflower full of radiation and you have to somehow dispose of that. <laughs> so it was like they were experimenting, but it was one of those things like, hmm, now what do we do? So I thought that was really interesting. That is really interesting. All right, moving on to butterflies. All right, how many wings do butterflies have? Two, four, six, or eight? I think that the answer is A. I believe that they have two wings. And Lindsay and Leslie both say B. Erica says B. I think I'm going to get outvoted. <laughs> I have a feeling. Hey, Jessica also says A. <laughs> There's two of us. Oh, no, we got another. Lori Rodriguez says B as well. Lindsay says that Robin is five and really into butterflies at the moment. Same. Butterflies awesome. are the coolest. We've got B, a couple of A's. So it's like it's split between B and, and, and B and A, I think. Mm -hmm. I think we have more B's, which is correct. There's four. And this is all but butterflies, not like certain species or this and certain or that. Really? And here you can kind of see better yeah. than the picture on the other side, which I purposely didn't want that one to be obvious. <laughs> so you can see the four wings here. All right, then we did a unit study on bikes, which one of my favorite science things in school was simple machines and a bike has that element to it. So kind of gave you a little hint or did I trick you? So a bike is an example of A, a simple machine, B, a compound machine, C, an automatic machine, or D, a bike is not a machine. So what do you think? I'm with uh, Faya on this one and Lindsay. I think that it is A. I think it is a simple machine. And Megan says B. She thinks that it's a compound machine. 
And Susie thinks that it is not a machine. Still got several more people that are participating that were waiting for their answers. Mary says B, Jessica says A, Erica says B. So most people are answering A or B. Okay, I think we're ready. Brenda Let's says A, Leslie says B. Jennifer says C, question mark. I do apologize if I get your guys' names pronounced incorrectly. I'm doing my best. So you can tell me if I do it wrong. <laughs> I think we are ready. So the answer okay. is B, but A is not necessarily wrong because a compound machine is made up of simple machines. So you were on the right track yeah. if you said simple machine. It's just because there's more than one, it becomes a compound machine. Now, Jennifer was C that it's automatic. Now, if it's like a motorcycle or maybe even an e-bike, do you have to pedal an e-bike at all or could it just go without pedaling? Not sure if it just assists you or could literally go without you pedaling. Then you would probably get be getting more into the automatic mode. So, All right. Uh, so, oh, so Jennifer says machine. she didn't mean to do C, maybe. <laughs> All right. So a simple machine or a compound machine basically is something that uh, requires uh, someone to be able to have some manual intervention, so to speak, whereas an automatic machine is something that can has a motor and can move by itself. Once it's been started. An automatic machine has a motor. A simple mm -hmm. machine, I mean, you could like start it off and then it sets the next ones. Like, what is it? Is it a Rube, Rube Goldberg machines? I think that's what they're called. Do you yeah. know those? If mm -hmm. you don't know those, Google it after we get Seriously. off. They're super fun to watch videos of those. So, yeah. I love, I love the ones machines. where it'll be just like a basket. They're trying to like get a basketball at a hoop, but it'll be like this huge, <laughs> crazy, complex machine. And then it's very end. It's like boop, right into the hoop. And you're just, it's so funny. Yep. Yep. Love them. Love those. All right. We're moving on to hummingbirds. So do you know where most of the species of hummingbirds live? I'm talking in the world. Is it the eastern half of the U.S., South America? Canada or Africa? So most of the species, not all. So we've got some people who are saying B, and it looks like split on A and B. I'm going to see. Hey, Lindsay, I'm going to send you a link to the bike unit study that Randy was talking about. Since you said you were looking into machines, the compound machines and things like that. Okay, we've got lots C. of C's. People are really all over the place, I think, on this one. What do you think, <laughs> Amelia? I think, I think the answer is B. It is B. It is South America. I had never thought about it before. Do they have hummingbirds everywhere or just some areas? And that's really kind of just south america and some into north america obviously but yeah it's, they're not all over the world oh it's so nice Lindsay. this is her first time with doing the live video so she said oh, this fun. is great good job randy well, good. <laughs> all right so moving on our next unit study was all about watermelon so it has the word water in it but how much of watermelon is really water and before I give you your choices for our younger kids out there, when you hear per cent, I want you to know that cent means a hundred, like a hundred cents is a dollar, right? So cents means a dollar and per means like per cent. Um, how do you define per? Like how many in it, okay? So out of a hundred parts of the watermelon, how much would be water? Is it 91%, 50%, 37%, or 9%? How much do you think is water? Looks like most people are saying A and a couple people are saying B. I'm also mm -hmm. going to actually, um, I'm going to guess A as well. All right. Still a couple coming in. 
So A is correct, is 91% of, 91% of it is water. So if it's a hot day, eat some watermelon. It's good for you. If you're sweating a lot, eat some watermelon. And in fact, but so the first place that really started growing watermelon on purpose was in Africa. And one of the things they would do is they would grow it and save it. I mean, you can't save it for a huge amount of time, but save it for the dry season. And it was a way they could capture water and save it for the dry season when they did not have much water and then they could eat the watermelon. That is super cool. I did not know that. So we are on to our last trivia question. All right, so our last unit study was about wind chimes. So what type of instrument is a wind chime? So you have to kind of know something about instruments in general. So is it percussion, brass, woodwind, or string? So discuss amongst yourselves what those different types are and decide which one wind chimes would fall under. Looks like Susie says C, Lindsay says C, Jennifer says B, Leslie says C. Oh, hi, Joseph Bernad Ber uh, Bernadette. It looks like you're, I just saw you here. She says she and uh, so the two of them say A, uh, Brenda says B, Erica says C, Mary says C. So it looks like mostly C. People think it's mostly woodwind. I'm going to say A. All right. There's lots of woodwind. tricks here in a way. If you think I about know. it, we, we see a string, right, hanging in the middle. Wind is right in the name of a wind chime. Brass, you think is metal, and there's lots of metal wind chimes. And then percussion. So percussion instruments like drums, um, anything that you bang or rub, scratch is percussion. So what you have to think about is not the parts of the wind chime, but how the sound is made. So if we think about how the sound is made, it is percussion, it's banging right? And so a uh, wind chime is sometimes called a chance instrument. So no one's playing it. It's by chance that it plays its music. So it's kind of a neat way to think about it. So a percussion, yes, it has the striker in the middle um, that strikes into the chimes. All right. So Technically, it's still summer until, I forget when it is this year, but it's usually around September 21st, 22nd. Weathermen, though, will tell you fall starts September 1st. That's how they mark it. The meteor, meteorological um, fall starts September 1st. So we haven't quite hit any of those. We're a little early, but we are going to say hello to fall today. And you are going to need this picture of the farm if you're gonna really be able to follow along with us now amelia will get this up on youtube right when we're done so if you're like oh i did not print this picture it's okay you can do this activity later but if you're gonna follow along with us you're gonna want that picture and some colored pencils or crayons and i am gonna read you the directions that normally as parents you would read to your kids as part of the unit study so we call these listening to learns because we're working on your listening skills and you're learning something at the same time. So I'm kind of taking a minute here to let you grab your stuff. So I'm going to talk for a minute about these as you grab your stuff and get ready. So normally with my own kids, they're kind of old now, but I've made some hard ones for my seventh grader that have to do with our history unit. And today... He was going, huh, what, which states did you say? What was that detail you gave me? So listening is something we work on at all ages. But my point is, I only say these once for my kids and then they have to ask if they want me to say it again or they missed a certain part because that's a skill 
being able to ask for clarification when we miss what somebody says. So today, because we're on the video and you can't ask me, I will repeat everything two times, okay? But feel free, parents, to help your kids if you know something's particularly hard for them. Um, kids, feel free to ask your parents for help, okay? Your parents need to listen carefully and not miss any details. All right, so we are learning about harvest. And I'm going to start the direction so you'll see if you've never done our unit studies how it's all just laid out for you and you just read. Harvest is the time period at the end of the growing season when crops are gathered from gardens and fields. Most harvests occur as summer turns to fall. Right end of summer below the word harvest on your picture or color the sun yellow. So that's the whole direction. I gave you a choice in case you're not writing words yet. You can color. And I'll say the direction one more time. Write end of summer below the word harvest on your picture or color the sun yellow. If I go too fast, tell me. I'm going to try to try to go slow. All right, number two. The word harvest is also a verb or an action word. As in the machines in your picture are harvesting the crops. Write harvesting under the machine on the right side of your paper and color the machine green. Now read the direction again. Write harvesting under the machine on the right side of your paper and color the machine green. And we might have some kids that color really fast and we might have some kids that really take their time. So if I get ahead of you, just Catch up in a few minutes or set your pencil crayon aside and you can always come back to the coloring later. All right, number three. People have been harvesting what they grow since the beginning of farming thousands of years ago. And many people have celebrations to show thankfulness for what they harvest. Below the bottom machine, write harvest festivals. Now, if your children are not writing that much yet, you can change the direction for them. Maybe you just have them write HF, H for harvest, F for festival. So the direction was below the bottom machine, write harvest festivals. Number four, in the United States, we have Thanksgiving. Write Thanksgiving or draw a turkey near the bottom left corner of your paper. I'll say that again. Write Thanksgiving or draw a turkey near the bottom left corner of your paper. Number five, and I'm just going to be honest, there is a typo in number five, but I'm honestly not sure what the typo is, which you'll see in a minute. In parts of India, the Harvest Festival is called Pongal and is held in January. Write Pongal or draw some rice in the bottom middle of your picture. So I have Pongal spelled two different ways. 
So you don't happen to just know the correct spelling of Pongal, do you, Amelia, off the top of your head? <laughs> Let's I think, see. Okay, you're going to confirm it for us. It is P O N, I think it's G A L. That is correct. A -L. Okay, I thought the first one was correct. Okay, so Pongal is P O N G A L. And I'll read the whole direction again. Write pongal or draw some rice in the bottom middle of your picture. Moving on to number Lindsay. six. Lindsay says that, that yes, that is the correct spelling. Okay, thank you. Sukath, and again, I could be pronouncing that wrong. So if you know how to say this celebration, and I'm not saying it correctly, let me know, is a harvest celebration held by Jewish people. People build special booths or huts for this celebration. Draw a hut or write Sukath near the bottom right corner of your paper. And I will spell the name. It is S U K K O T H. So draw a hut or write Sukath near the bottom right corner of your paper. All right, moving on to number seven. When people first harvested crops, they used their hands and simple tools. Today, many crops are still picked by hand. Draw a tomato plant in the middle of the field and draw a person next to it picking tomatoes. You can make this as simple as you want make your person a stick figure. Don't get hung up on trying to make a perfect drawing. And to repeat the direction, draw a tomato plant in the middle of the field and draw a person next to it picking tomatoes. We've got six directions left. All right, here's number eight. And if you're still working on your tomato plant and your person, that's fine. You can do that or you can come back to them later. If you're ready to move on, number eight is, today farmers also use machines to make the job of harvesting crops easier. Many of the machines are called combines because they combine a few different jobs into one machine. Above the machine in the middle, write combine. That is spelled C-O-M-B-I-N-E. So that direction to repeat it was above the machine in the middle, write combine. All right, number nine. One job of the combine is to cut and collect the crops. And this is called reaping. Color the combine in the middle blue. You may write reaping near the combine. And I'll spell that in a minute. So the direction was color the combine in the middle blue. You may write reaping near the combine. R-E-A-P 
I-N-G. And just to remind you, that just means cutting and collecting the crops. All right, number 10. Another job of a combine is threshing. This separates the parts of the plant people won't eat from the parts they do eat. Color the tractor on your paper red. You may write threshing near the tractor. So to repeat, color the tractor on your paper red. You may write threshing near the tractor. And that is spelled T-H-R-E-S-H-I-N-G, threshing which just means to separate the parts of the plant people do eat from those they don't eat. All right, we've got three directions left. So after threshing, the combine gets rid of the parts that people don't eat. And this is called winnowing. Draw leaves falling out of the shovel on the front of the tractor. You may write winnowing near the falling leaves. And I'll spell that in a minute. So draw leaves falling out of the shovel on the front of the tractor. You may write winnowing near the falling leaves. So winnowing is W-I-N-N. O W I N G, winnowing, which means getting rid of the parts people don't eat. The part, this is the next direction, the part not eaten by people is called the chaff, and it can be eaten by farm animals. Color the silo in the upper right corner red. This is where the chaff will be stored. You may write chaff next to the silo. To repeat the direction, color the silo in the upper right corner red. This is where the chaff will be stored. You may write chaff next to the silo. And chaff is spelled C-H-A-F-F. -F. We've got one direction left. Being a farmer is a lot of work and many farmers live right on their farms. Draw a house on the hill for the farmer to live in. So to repeat that last direction, draw a house on the hill for the farmer to live in. And when you're all done, comment with something that you found interesting in the directions or surprising that you learned about harvesting today or just your favorite thing to color or draw. I thought it was really interesting. I am come from a small town, so I know a lot about the different combines and things like that, but I'm mm -hmm. surprised because I knew about all the different kinds of harvesting like you were talking about, but I more of like from an ancient history perspective and start studying oh. how they used to harvest things. So it's surprising to right. me that they were combined so many different stages of harvesting into one. I imagined that they would need at least like two different like tractors well but that's really impressive. i think it depends on what you buy i mean i think there's ones that combine two things ones that combine more it's just probably what you what your needs are depending on what you're harvesting yeah here in yeah. north idaho they grow chickpeas and um, canola and uh, barley lots of different grains gotcha um, I'm more of a city girl. 
<laughs> so we used to have more farm animals around us, like with cows and stuff like that, but it's all getting developed now. So we still have, there's a cow that lives behind us though. There are still well, like hobby, hobby, they're not even hobby farms, but just people with chickens and goats just on their, on their land at their house here. Susie says she's more of a country girl too. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so what was your, the thing that you guys found that thought was most interesting about the uh, learning about the harvest? Well, I'm glad you can still hear us maybe, Lindsay. I don't know if that's what you mean, or you just mean you're still in the comments. And while people are finishing up, I shared a link with you, Amelia, if you wanna share mm -hmm. it in the comments. If you liked this following directions, each month we put out just like a fun following directions. It's usually more just fun and not so much like learning vocabulary or things like that. Um, and it's free each month. So I just sent Amelia the link to send to you all if you want to download that. So that one, let me think copy it even link to that. Okay. Um, yeah, this is, it's a scene of like a backyard with summer games in it. And then there's five sets of directions. So you would do you know one a week or one each day during the week however you wanted to do that and that helps you work on vocabulary you use lots of places like bottom top left right above below all that that good vocabulary but it's a little more fun than like working on like threshing and chaff and reaping and words like that <laughs> not that that's not fun but i'm just saying it's it's not as academic so much. It's more fun. Yeah. So Susie says her favorite thing to learn about was the hummingbirds. And Faya says that their favorite thing to draw was the house. I see that. So I went and ahead if anybody and wants to, sh I was say, if ahead. anybody wants to share a picture in the comments of their drawings or anything, feel free. Yes, we love to see it. And you see Jessica said meat. they like the turkey. Oh, Drawing I didn't see that. Yes, this is a really good one. I think this was a lot of fun. There was a lot of great information in this Listen to Learn. I feel like it. you say mini unit study, but it's there's a lot of information that you're giving here. There is. And I mean, you could just do a few parts and make it more mini, or you could do it all then it probably wouldn't be mini anymore. But I always say a unit study is like, it's like a, when you go to the restaurant and when you have the buffet, it's like a buffet. So you pick, when you have a unit study, pick what you want off, off the buffet. You don't have to do it all, pick what you like. And speaking of that, she, uh, Randy actually wrote an article all about how to use unit studies and customize them to your homeschool. This is a little bit of a spoiler, but it is going to be published in our next magazine that we're going to be publishing on September 10th. So if you guys do want to learn about unit studies from Randy and how she uses them with her homeschool, I'm going to drop a link to sign up for our newsletter so that you guys can get the first access to that article once it goes live on September 10th. So yes, Lindsay and the buffet the thing is, is in there. <laughs> Lindsay says her favorite part, uh, Robin's favorite part was the quiz and coloring along, and he doesn't usually enjoy the coloring, so it's a win. Oh, good. Yeah, my and, kids, well, I take that back. My youngest has never been a big color or, or drawer, but he'll sit there and do it for, for this. I mean, it's not elaborate. It's very simple, but that's okay. Thank you so much for joining us again, Randy. This is a lot of fun. Everyone really enjoyed going through all that information about the different trivia for the different mini unit studies. So everyone, I highly recommend go check out the free mini unit studies that she's putting available. It's a whole lot of value that she's giving away. And go and support Peanut Butter Fish Lessons. It goes to a good cause, being able to support a fellow homeschooler. And just 
every week the new fall mini unit study is free for one week so you want to make sure you sign up and sunday night i send out an email with the free ones you want to get them before the price kicks in so All right. okay thank you so much randy i really appreciate you coming on here and doing this class for everyone Thanks for hosting. Bye. Thanks for everybody with all your comments and everything.